Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Many a True Nerd, and welcome back to Rome Total War. Last time we made a very good start with our war against the people of Pontus. We've pretty much driven them off the vast majority of Asia Minor. We've already moved our borders right up here to their final two cities. But to be honest, their final two cities are pretty much all they had in the first place. All we've taken over so far are little villages. The map may look a lot more nice and green down there, but honestly, the economic strength of the people of Pontus is still present and correct. They've got their cities, they've got seaports up here, they've got mines at the back. They can hold on for now and they do still have a full stack army. We probably want to be a little bit careful however because the Egyptians are still floating around too. They're temporarily distracted by taking Antioch back off the Armenians but that's not gonna last forever. Sooner or later they might decide to come around here. If they want to smash one of their full stack armies against this full stack army I wouldn't stand in their way, that'd be fine. Plus, we can't rule out the Egyptians might go over and deal with the Armenians instead. So we probably just want to keep an eye on things. I've got a good intelligence network now with my spies, so we should be able to get a pretty clear idea of what's going on. Probably what we want to start thinking about instead is the Thracians, who are getting just a little bit too big, to be honest. And we're in a good situation right now, which is the Thracians just expended most of their strength taking over... This crappy little large barbarian town here, smashing a full strength Dacian army. Now the Dacians, hang on, what have the Dacians got left? They've got a town over there, they've got their... That's also a town over there, but a bit better defended. And then we've got, is that the capital now? No. Where's the Dacian capital? Ah, this is interesting. They've taken a town off the Germans. Okay, I didn't even realise they... Oh, the Germans are in a bit of trouble, aren't they? So the Germans, actually, no offence, the Germans have got, like, still... Uh, I mean, they've still got, yeah, four territories, but they've been squeezed out by the English and by the Dacians. Are the Dacians and the Germans even still at war right now? Yes, the Germans are still actually at war with the Dacians and the British, and they allied with the Carthaginians and the Gauls. Oh, Germany, you have made poor alliances. You have allied with all the losers of the world. Well, in that case, I think we should probably at this point consider coming in on Dacia's side. If we were to now try and take the economic heart of the Thracians, because Byzantium is basically unguarded. That's a large city with only a crappy wooden wall, basically unguarded. Tarnus up here is pretty well guarded, but nothing we couldn't handle. And then we simply draw up along the river. This might be a good time to do it before the Thracians manage to rebuild their army. Because if we take over all this infrastructure... Admittedly, they do still have, yeah, they've got a minor city there, that's a minor city there, and then they've got a large town here. But I feel like we could... could be worth it, to be honest. This might be a good opportunity to get two potentially very valuable towns and come up with a nice, stable, secure frontier. So I think that's about all we can do this turn. This is the same turn we were working on last time, so we've already done most of what we can do here. Numidian's probably keeping on there. I think I just saw the armies of Pontus move towards us. That's fine. The British... Still, no one's quite sure who wants to take Alessia. <laughs> oh, no. No one's sure. Though, admittedly, when this force arrives here, though, that is actually a good... That's a good army. Now they've got a flipping Forester Warband. Yeah, High King's Hall, Hall of Heroes for those Chosen Swordsmen, Wall... Oh, yeah. Basically, this place is as upgraded as it can be, and the Forester Warbands are damn good. Like, look at that. Missile Attack 14, and they've got a Melee Attack of 14 as well. These are archers that can actually do some serious damage, even if you charge them. This town is going to be tough to take. But it would appear that both the forces of Britain and the forces of the Julia are kind of gathering around it. So it just depends who basically manages to gather enough forces to actually take this thing first. I'm genuinely curious who it's going to be. And we've got the Senate officers assigned. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Now this is looking good. Ooh! Ooh, Spurious Scapula. Was that your first? So, no, you were quite still first, but now you're up to Idal. That's perfect. So you could, in time, become a very, very good little actual, uh, yeah, city administrator. Meanwhile, Vibius Brutus. Oh, no! Don't give this man officers. He's gonna die soon, damn it. I just really hope, by the way, before he dies, some of our new kids come through. So we've got a whole bunch, in fact, we've got loads of kids coming through right now. Flipping, finally, these people actually got married late in life. This guy's just had a kid, he's age two. We've got one age 11 boy there. This woman is, this woman's 13, but um, 
as is traditional Roman, unfortunately, it seems a little bit weird to us, but as a traditional Roman, she's gone over to the young woman portrait, because I'm pretty sure now at any point she might actually start getting married, because, you know, she could have been at Roman times, so this game is, though it's a little bit uncomfortable for us, this game is vaguely accurate in that regard. We've got a 13-year-old there, he's going to be coming in within, like, five turns, that's great, so yeah... We've got a whole bunch of young kids coming in soon. I just hope some of them arrive soon. Like, I'd love one of them to have come in in time to be involved in the Thracian campaign up here. But sadly, I suspect that's not actually going to be possible. And with a couple of units broken up, Sardis reaches 2,000. We can now build a governor's villa there. Very, very good indeed. Though I did think, by the way, this guy's actually pretty decent. I may as well, while we're waiting for Sardis to grow, move him over to Pergamum. Then... He actually just hurt the income of Pergamon. Marvellous. I'm not sure how you even did that, by the way. How did you pull off reducing the income from Pergamon? Like, I can see how you've got, like, you know, minus to squalor, plus two to influence, etc. But how did you... I don't know. Does minus law impact... Well, you know what? It's happier now, so we can put the tax rate up, so it's probably fine. And we should probably, at some point, build you an academy as well, so you actually improve a little bit. Roads is looking a lot safer now, by the way. I deliberately built some good Roman stone walls around it because the Egyptians can, on occasion, if I start a war with them, send some nice units via sea to come and take your islands. So I'd like some proper walls around Rhodes and Cadonia. So I built stone walls there, and Cadonia, when we have the opportunity to, I will do the same. So I'll get some proper wooden walls around them right now, just so they can hold out a little bit longer at least. So this is interesting. We have got ourselves a very large army and can we... Ah, oh, tragically, we can't quite get to this bridge. I'd have loved to have done a bridge battle against this large army here, but it looks like we won't be able to. Instead, we may just have to take these guys on in the open field. That's fine. Who's got the best armor right now? It's almost certainly you, Spurrier Scapula. You are pretty damn decent with the exception of your problem of doubtful courage. But other than that, yeah, probably I shouldn't trust a main battle to you just because that is a bit of a problem. What's available in your... That's just Mercenary Peltas. That's fine. Opius Brutus, however, he's got... Oh, he's got Quartum... Ah, even though he's got Quartermaster, he won't be able to get there in time. That's a shame. Uh, but yeah, he's got nothing that gives him a boost to morale, but he's also got nothing that actually hurts morale. So he's probably the better bet. Let's just quickly draw up over here and come up with some new armies, a new main army that I want to take on the main Pontic force. Right, he needs himself some solid infantry, then he's going to need to be backed up with some solid archers. So we've got ourselves two Cretan archers right there and another unit right here. Lovely, three sets of Cretan archers, that will be just fine. He's going to need himself some decent quality cavalry, you've got that in this army together with some war dogs, lovely. Give him one unit of hoplites and... Oh, go on, give him another flipping unit of Cretan archers. Why not? Let's go all in with the archers here. We're going to need more in the way of actual infantry strength yet. So if I just get those four units of Astarte back up to full strength, that's fine. And then... Is that going to be enough? Four units of Cretans. Four units of Cretans is plenty. I wouldn't mind a little bit more infantry, but... Ah, good. We've got some right flipping there. Horses aren't perfect, but that'll do. Now, you go forwards over there. You also can't get much further forwards. You go into this chappie's army. Lovely. That's now a bit of a scruffy army with... Yeah, very, very limited infantry. So probably, actually, you come over here. Join this army as much as you can. Yeah, send over some units. Where did this army come from, by the way? I'm not sure. Spurious Scapula, you have the scruffiest army imaginable. You just stand back here, and then you over here, you are the reinforcements. Ah, we've got Titus Brutus over here. How are you, by the way? Sorry, I'd forgotten you were an Ansira. Oh, gosh darn it, he's the only one that can actually get to the bridge. He could actually get there. Okay, um... Who else can actually make it to the... No. The problem is none of the troops can make it to the bridge. He can make it to the bridge. But no one else can actually join him there, which is a real flipping shame. I'd love to have held the bridge with Titus Brutus, but it's just not going to fly. Now, incidentally, we've also got our assassin over here. He can't... Yeah, this guy's the factioner. He's going to be difficult to take care of. I remember that. Over here, however, we've got ourselves... A f Ooh. There are many, many onagers. This place has a practice range. That means their capital has a flipping catapult range. 
Now, it would be lovely to have a catapult range. Let's just start picking off his family, because this is... Oh, wait, hang on. No, no, that's not what I want you to do. You're the spy. The assassin, however, this is 95% chance to kill. Yep, there we are. He should be dead. There we are. Assassination mission success. Lovely. So that is one family member dead. That's useful. You can start moving up here, because next turn you can kill, you can kill another family member for 92. Marvellous. Right, let's just get our spy up top to the Pontic capital as well. Not least as I would like to know what the deal is with their actual faction leader. De <laughs> casual adulterer. Marvellous. Plus two morale is actually a good thing to be a casual adulterer. Obviously, you know, if he keeps getting more adultery, then it does get bad over time. But it is kind of fun that, yeah, in its early stages, that actually the soldiers kind of admire you for that sort of thing. So what do we have here? Yeah, the council's chamber, so it's a level four city, albeit with only a basic wooden wall. Elite cavalry stables. Army barracks? Oh, blimey. But together with only a basic port and a basic trader and a catapult range. Okay, so I want to take their capital purely because these guys have got themselves some really, really solid infrastructure. There will be useful to have. I was mentioning, like, all these crappy little villages and towns around here, I can't build anything in. But over here, I can retrain everything. Now this... This is really, really damn interesting, therefore. I need to go and take this city. I need to smash these guys and send one of my backup armies up this way. And down here, it does indeed look like the Scipio are actually ready to try and do something. They've brought literally all the Hastati in the world. It just appears to be their faction leader, Flavius Scipio as well, together with a ridiculously large number of Hastati. By the way, I am told, I never knew this, I have just learned something today. Like, I have regularly accused the computer of cheating, because it has more than 20 units in an army. No! No, it does not, because if we count the squares here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When you look at, like, an army or a city, it's only nine squares. So even though the full stack is 20, and thus, you know, logically it would be... 10, and then another row of 10. No, it's only 9. So therefore, there is allowed to be an extra 2 on the bottom, which strikes me as so weird. Why wouldn't you have just designed the UI so it was a 10 by 2 grid, because 20 is the full stack? I never knew that. I always just assumed it was just a weird bug. For some reason, when you open up someone else's arm, when you kind of use this thing, and by the way, the flipping Numidians are totally about to take Carthage, and that's just beautiful. Uh, yeah, the Carthaginians don't stand a chance. But the Carthaginians are... They've got this tiny little crappy island. They've got Palmer over here, which is not going to do very well for them. They've got Lepkis Magna, where I assume there's more than what we're seeing, because I should probably actually get a flipping spy down here, because I swear this is where there were some huge Carthaginian armies. So I feel like it potentially is not going to be that easy for the Scipiones, unless, of course, the Carthaginians decide they're not going to bother relieving their own towns. Like they decided not to bother doing a Thapsus, because that worked out so bloody well for them. But we shall indeed see about that. Yes, meanwhile, just keep training troops over here, because I feel like, well, we've got a great big army that's pretty much ready to move over here. I feel like this army might want to start moving north. I feel like Thrace is potentially one of our next big targets, and we've got enough troops in the Middle East, at least for the moment. Though before we wrap up, let's just quickly take the troops out of Termon to take on this crappy little enemy army. Clear victory, lovely. Ah! Oh! Perfect. Now, that is exactly what I was kind of hoping would happen. The game is detected. I'm extremely low on generals. So, as a result, now, if I start sending armies that don't have generals out and they win victories, sometimes you just get promoted. So, this guy is just a good commander. That's literally him. Like, what is he? He's age 20, good commander, and he might have a slightly fat neck. So... First job he's going to have is going to be hire some mercenaries. And now he is going to get himself back to Termon. Now, is he good enough to... You know what? Screw it. He doesn't have any actively harmful traits. He may as well get going. So you, my good man, head over here. You're going to join up with this army. <laughs> I know you're only 20 years old, you've only just been promoted, but screw it, you're coming along anyway. And by the way, you're bringing these here hoplites with you. These guys get back in here and get retrained. Lovely. <laughs> Yep, congratulations. We've got ourselves our new guy. Ooh, it's Cicero. His name is apparently Lentulus Cicero. Cicero meaning chickpea, because there's a great Roman orator and lawyer. And as a result, people just kind of think of the name Cicero with kind of great fondness and respect. Or at least I do, because I think Cicero is bloody awesome. I love Cicero. I took a module exclusively on Ciceronian history and literature and what he did in his life and what he wrote and stuff while I was at university studying classics. That was great fun. I love Cicero. So yes, this guy is indeed Lentulus Chickpea. So uh, I think we shall just simply name this man Chickpea and be done with it. He can join up with the army and they can, in fact, actually we can join them up now. Oh yes. Now that is quite a good army. 
Head north, my good man. Now, I'm not saying we're going to attack our allies, but yes, yes, actually, I am. And as you'd probably reasonably expect, Antioch has indeed fallen back to the Egyptian army. There was a very, very large force here, but it's done damage to them. And the question now is, yeah, where do the Egyptians go now? Revenge against the Armenians? Up here towards their old enemy of the forces of Pontus? Or potentially, are they going to head over towards us? After all, we actually share a route now. We do actually have Ionia running straight into Cilicia, so the two of us are actually neighbours, and the Egyptians are bloody warlike in this game. Let's see what happens next. Oh, oh, who got the... I didn't see who got the siege in Alessia there. Someone did. Forces of Pontus bringing in their spies. That's fine. Doesn't really matter. Someone's coming down here. More troops gathering in the capital. Someone's coming up to us. Probably offering us maybe peace. Yes, ceasefire. The Gauls are just desperate for peace. And trade rights! Why not trade rights? Yay! And why not swap map information? Because there's a chance like their diplomats might be somewhere where that's useful. It's too generous, we must turn it down. Oh well, that's a shame. Yeah, who's got that? I think it's the Julii that have got the siege off. Which works for me, because yeah, with... Ooh! Hello. Oh! Small problem here. So, Leontia, the 13-year-old girl in our family, has been betrothed to a 42-year-old man who's quite bold. And that's... That's unpleasant, but I'd be willing to accept it if he was good. But the problem is he's not that good. Like, publicly lawless is good. Been in the wars is fine. Conflict commander is a good starter point. Drillmaster is actively harmful. Minus two morale for all troops hurts. And because he's 42, he's only going to be around for maybe 20 more years. No, unfortunately, we need to actually get her betrothed to someone better. Sorry. Don't leave it too long, by the way. If you leave it too long, the women of your family become unmarriageable because they've got too old to be married off. Which is a bit of a shame. Now, Vibius Brutus just picked up more... Ah, oh, Vibius Brutus. You are picking up some great stuff. This is why it's great to have academies. Like, just from what he's picked up, because there's academies there. He's got librarian. Plus one influence, plus one management. That's great. Uh, chances of casualties recovering. That's great. The free man clerk. The plus 10% bonus trading income, plus one management. Like, all of this stuff has basically come because there's a basic academy in this city. That is why academies are great. Like, literally, the benefit he's getting to trade income and management... It's paid for itself, that academy. Now, diplomatic information. Germany and Scythia allies. We've declared a ceasefire. Pontus and Egypt have declared a ceasefire. Well, that's... Oh! Oh, my! The Egyptians just handed Tarsus back to Pontus as part of the terms of the ceasefire. That's weird. Also, who the hell are you? There's, there's a 38-year-old just floating around here who's... Okay, hang on, hang on. We must have a... We must have a diplomat somewhere around here. I'd like to buy this man. We've got one diplomat way over here. Do we not have another one? Get him over here. Right, get them over here. I'm going to buy this man. He's 38, but he looks like he might be all right. In fact, actually, do I have a spy? Okay, we've got a spy nearby. Let's just spy on him quickly. Though, actually, hang on. Before we do that... Ooh, Termon's grown. Let's grow Termon. Lovely. That can go up to... Oh, perfect timing. That can go up to a big city next. Yeah, nothing major, to be honest. Superior commander and command talent. This guy's 38 years old. I'm not sure where he's come from. Like, sometimes this means it's an actual, like, army of someone else who's gone rogue. And you can vaguely tell who it is by, like, you know, the style of his general or whatever. Sometimes rebels just have generals. Oh, hello. You've gone up here. That's not what I was expecting you to do, but all right. Meanwhile, what's going on here? We've got ourselves... The faction leaders moved here with, you know, easily their best army. But they've left easily their best city mostly unguarded in the hands of someone who I can very easily murder right now. So, yes, indeed, we've got... I can also, if I want to, murder my own spy. I don't know whether that was intentional or not, but yeah, when you've got agents embedded in the city, they do show up as assassinatable targets, so I could assassinate my own spy. Let's not do that. Let's instead assassinate this man right here. And he goes down nice and easy. Oh, hello, I've picked up a new trait. What is that? And that is Expert Assassin. So I think this guy is actually potentially now maxed out. 8, 9, 10. Yes, this guy's now maxed out subterfuge. 10 out of 10. He's only 43. He'll be around for a while yet. So now he can basically murder anyone. If you want a nice clean job or have a particularly difficult assignment, this is your man. And he also travels around with a monkey, a catamite, and a skilled courtesan. Which sounds like the beginning of a joke, but never mind. So the capital is now basically unguarded. All I need to do now then is spurious scapula. If we move your kind of backup army just in that direction, 
that'd be fine. The problem is there's... Yeah, there's a pass for the river up there, but there's no... You've never built roads. This city that's got, like, you know, a catapult range and blacksmiths and mines and temples and a council's chambers, they never built roads. The computer makes odd decisions sometimes. <laughs> really, really odd decisions. Right, you know what? We may as well just check what the game thinks is the fastest way to get over there, which is probably going to be, yes, as I thought, it's basically just the direct route. So, we'll simply move some troops up in that direction. That's fine. Anything good to buy, by the way? Ah! We're over here in some of the more interesting stuff, so now we've reached Eastern Mercenaries. So we can pick up our own Eastern Spearmen, which attack 3, charge bonus 1, defense 7. You know what? I can do without paying, flipping 650 denarii to hire you. Scythian Mercenaries are quite good though, because those are actual proper horse archers, which are really cool, which normally you can't get. In fact, I'm pretty sure other than Mercenaries, I don't think Rome has any way to get horse archers. I don't think there's any way for them to be accessed. So, I mean... They're not that great, to be honest. Like, the thing is, they're really, really annoying, because they can shoot as far as a normal archer can. Not a long-range archer, just a basic archer, like our standard Roman archers. But they've only got missile attack of seven, defense is two, and they do run out of, like, archers. Like, they're really hard to track down. They're just annoying. Like, it's more an annoying thing the computer does, but... Oh, go on then, why not? They're actually pretty cheap to maintain, so go on. So they're moving up towards the Pontic capital. These guys, however, now need to take on... Oh, hang on. You can't... Why can't you get to... Oh. I may have just made an error here. Which is... Oh, it's because you've got flipping... Oh, wait, hang on. Have I just sent... I've just sent the wrong army. Slight problem there, which is, yes, I'm meant to send this army up there to take care of... Oh. Balls. Right, okay. Right. We need to quickly draw up a new army out of all of this. Spurrier Scapula, you need to not do this. Okay, right, okay. We can fix this. Titus Brutus, we need to draw up a new army, one as good as we can. Ah, fortunately, we do have the reservists right here who we can bring in. So we've got at least the backbone of a decent army for this chap, which is good. So that goes up there. That's at least some support. Yeah, bring in more archers yet. Send over the, yeah, send over at least one group of hoplites if you'd be so kind. We've got another group of hoplites there. Then we've got, oh yeah, we've got plenty of hoplites in fact. Okay, send the hoplites over to those guys. Those will make a decent part of the front line. We're going to need some cavalry ideally, but it feels like, ah, we're light on cavalry. We've got flipping barbarian mercenaries, but that's no good at all. Right, there's going to be basically no cavalry in this army, which is a shame because cavalry is a very good way of winning fights, in which case... We're going to need, how much indirect fire do we have right now? Four Roman arch units of good quality, one pretty much full strength Cretan group as well. We're going to have to back this up by, yeah, tossing in some more strength there. We've got a load of Rhodian slingers who are pretty damn good. Those guys could just be on the front line or we could just have more archers. Let's go for just bringing the Rhodian slingers up. Those guys are pretty damn solid. So... He now goes up here between these two mountain rangers. Is there anything good, by the way, to be hired? Only the Eastern Mercenaries. Don't worry about that. So this guy could now go for either of these groups. And Spurious Scapula, meanwhile, should probably just back off here for the moment because he is not ready to move over towards the other Pontic cities yet. On the other hand, my little chickpea over here in Greece can most certainly head north. So he's now got a really good army. Now, that is the army which probably I want to have moving towards Tylus. Now, that's currently the capital. Now, Byzantium I don't need to worry about. But Byzantium, what I should probably do is I should send Amulius the Wrathful over towards Byzantium. What I should also do, incidentally, is... Yeah, we've got all of these onagers I've been building up specially. So, what I should probably do with the onagers is have them head towards the walls of Tylus, because Tylus has got some tough walls. So if I've got the onagers there, that'll be useful. Oh, there's so little here, by the way. This is the crappiest little scruffy army, but it will certainly do. Yeah, just a single unit of onagers will be able to tear through this wall, and that will be fine. So probably what we want to do now is we would like to have you, together with just some basic... Yeah, we've just got some, like, basic infantry, and then we've got some basic archers. Bring some cavalry along, and bring along, like, one unit of onagers. That will be fine for breaking into Byzantium. This place needs a tax cut. That's absolutely fine. By the way, I never introduced these, by the way. I talked about onagers. I never talked about scorpions. 
Scorpions are really, really interesting. Scorpions basically have ridiculously long-range missiles and they impale men. They're basically kind of like... They're like artillery, in the sense that artillery would be known in the future, which is their artillery that are really good at, like, shooting men from a very, very long way away. They're kind of useless against, like, buildings and walls and stuff, but they're just very, very competent at taking out men. They are not generally well used in Rome Total War, because, like, you know, basic archers are perfectly good at the same job, but... You know what, I'll probably give them a go at some point just to show them off. We just kind of need to get some basic troops trained up here first. So, we've got this army that can take out Byzantium. We've got Chickpea, who can take out Tylus. And then, when he needs to, Cornelius Brutus, with at least a decent army, can move up north and hold the bridge against any reinforcements that come down here from the bastards up in Thrace. And that's right, we need to start calling them the Thracian Bastards, just so we start getting into the right mindset ahead of the war. And let's also get an academy going on over here in Pergamum, ready to start training up this guy. As well as, don't forget, we have got ourselves peasants. Just keep on getting these cities built up. Nicomedia needs to be got up to 2,000 as soon as possible as well. Now down here, aha! Okay, so... The Scipionis have indeed decided to attack Lepkis Magna. Now it's got a very, very healthy garrison, but it is... Uh, well, it's at least a large town because there's a port. I just don't know, I don't know if you can tell by looking at it whether it might be a city. Like when it's the capital, you can't see anymore. I think it's just a large town. I'm going to draw my troops up here, so if the Carthaginians decide to come out and attack, we'll be able to help. Now, the Scipiones should be able to handle this, but yeah, when there's not stone walls, it kind of... Oh, and by the way, <laughs> Carthage has indeed fallen to the Numidians. Marvellous. Well, flip and it's a huge city, so that is level 5 city right flipping there. So, uh, well done, Romans. You've actually just basically gifted a huge city to the Numidians that you could very easily have taken for yourself. Though, admittedly, there is a, yeah, Roman force right flipping here that is just deciding to float around near the Numidian capital. That's to be watched, because I'm not sure they have good intentions. And up here, yes, indeed, it appears to be the Romans that got the siege off. I need to get over here as soon as possible to make sure these guys don't get in before I want them to. Because the Julii forces, well, it's nowhere near as big a force as was taking on the Gaelic town over here. And over here, they've got themselves faction leader, they've got chosen swordsmen, they've got decent quality archers. They stand a chance, not just, oh yeah. Two units of really solid heavy cavalry and some light cavalry supports. They could potentially trigger a mass rout yet. This is not over. And conveniently enough, we've just caught up to the flipping Thracians. It appears they've got slightly more strength than I was expecting still alive. They've got this army here that, yeah, it's got like, what is that, 14 or so units. But from the strength and the banner, they're damaged. Same for this army, potentially. So, if we were to attack the Thracians... They'd either come, well, they might come down here. You know, I'm going to start training an army over here at Patavium just in case they head in this direction. Well, now I guess we just see what the Pontic forces decide to do next because, well, I <laughs> can't believe they got Tarsus back. I cannot believe the Egyptians handed back Tarsus as the terms of the ceasefire. They were clearly the dominant force in that war, but maybe they feel a little bit under threat because of the Armenian situation. But I'm just amazed they handed Tarsus back. It's incredible. By the way, um, when a city gets handed back to you, it automatically generates a garrison, which is constructed out of what is capable of being built there, which is why there's like three units of peasants, even though normally you'd never like train a unit of peasants at all. It's just generated out of what can be trained. So because it's a town and thus there's barely any military infrastructure here, like, you know, it's peasants, it's a couple of units of eastern spearmen, and it's some Silesian pirates, because they were presumably nearby mercenaries that were available. So the game just generates out of what happens to be available. And we've got another husband for what's her face going on here, but this guy's 40. He's also a drill master. For the last time, no. Although admittedly, I'm a little bit concerned that Leontia is playing the field a little bit fast here. She was betrothed to one guy like six months ago. We got rid of him, and there's another guy here, and they've both been in their 40s. And we have a flash flood over here. Lovely. This happens occasionally. Admittedly, the flash flood has flooded the sea. The sea has become flooded. 
via a flash flood over here near Crotorn, which is quite good. So, uh, yes, yeah, this actually just occasionally happens. You just get a natural disaster, like a really bad storm or a flood or whatever, and basically it just means there's like a little bit of damage done. So as a result, the population is dropped by uh, 500, and four soldiers were also killed. So that is very, very sad indeed. So we should probably retrain those guys. Marvellous. Also, I should say, by the way, um, the reason why I've been building arenas all over the shop, and I don't think I actually explained this yet, is um, once you've built arenas, you can basically um, set a number of games that happens in your city. That's new thing that gets set. So I believe right now, if you set games to yearly games, like uh, there's no cost for it, if I want to get the happiness up in a hurry, I can put the um, games up to monthly games, at which point, yeah, there's a cost. In terms of uh, entertainment is now 20% of happiness, but of course the entertainment also costs 400. And that is one of the things the city actually needs to pay for itself. Uh, one of the very few things cities actually pay for in terms of their own upkeep. And if I want to, I can also make daily games, which makes the city even flipping happier. You should really only do that in emergencies, because it's quite expensive. It's 800 denarii a turn to do that. So it's really flipping expensive. Maybe just like if we do it yearly, like local businessmen decide to put on games out of their own pocket to drum up business and look like good people, which is what happened in Rome a lot, by the way. Very often things like races and games and whatever were actually put on at private individuals' expenses. Often people who wanted to run for political officers subsequently, so they just put on big games just to get their name out. So as a general rule, the public purse, like, well, at some points in Roman history, the public purse didn't have to pay for that sort of thing. Though, of course, later on in the imperial period, the emperor himself did, out of the public purse, pay for an awful lot of gamey stuff. And Senate mission has been failed. I did not blockade that port in time. That's a shame, but I don't actually care. Now, Sardis is up to being a good Roman town, meaning the culture pentas have disappeared. And that means if we build a port, that is actually way less impressive than I thought it was going to be. In which case, I'm going to build paved roads because Sardis is quite a long area that leads right up to the flipping, uh, yeah, Egyptians. So, or rather, actually, it doesn't anymore. Now I've just picked up another border with the bloody Pontic people. Where did you go? Why, why are you over there? Okay, I think this guy might have lost it, potentially, which actually kind of works for me because... Can you actually make it to... You can make it here this turn just... Albeit, I think what I'll need to do is I'll need to send my cavalry ahead and then send the infantry to join up with him. This force here can probably take on these guys here, but to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous. I just don't know what he's doing. Like, it's possible there's a fleet somewhere nearby. I mean, I'd like to take over this town anyway, quite frankly. War declared his... Oh! Hang on. Um, so the, the centre people of Rome have declared war against the Numidians. That's fascinating. So, why have they done that? Is it... I mean, like, the Skippy I have it. Like, that's... You very rarely see that. Sometimes when the game decides it wants the kind of combat to go a particular way, the Senate will just declare its own little war. But I don't think it's got any reason to. Like, the only reason why a Senate would declare war out of nowhere would be, in theory, like, if an enemy vessel came and besieged Rome. So, okay, this is... This is interesting. Right, okay. In which case, we need to start getting another unit of troops over towards the mainland. Get this unit over to here. Get you into you and get you on the move. We need to get a unit of cavalry over here because if the Scipii are going to try and flipping hold Carthage, a huge city with a stone wall, when there's that big an army, I really hope the Scipiones try and besiege Carthage now because if they do, then it's going to be a lot harder than it used to be. Now, how are you doing, by the way? Have you nearly built your... They have built a ton of siege equipment and they've... Ooh, they've brought a lot of flipping heavy cavalry with them together with a whole bunch of... Well, it's just Venetes and Astarte. Hastati have this odd unfortunate habit when you funnel them through narrow entrances to towns when you've battered down the walls They have this unfortunate habit of mass breaking Yeah, we'll have to see about this won't we? So the Scipiones are doing interesting things. We've got more interesting things up north here We've got ah the Julii have managed to throw together a competent army all round here they might or might not be able to handle this. I think they'll be going in there next turn as well. So we may as well get ourselves right up there. Lovely. So this town's under siege. Yeah, it's a big old town. They've built pretty much everything barbarians are allowed to build. We're not going to be involved in that siege. If they fail, surely this British army will be able to finish up. And I would like to think they'll fail, but that's a solid army. The Julia have actually done a pretty good job. And that would be... The end of Gaul, once and for all. Very, very sad indeed. Segestica also has stone walls, by the way, just in case anything goes wrong against the forces of Thrace or Dacia, just on the off chance. Now, prepare for war on Thrace. Continue that little war here. Now, 
What we need to do potentially is I need to make space in this army for plenty of flipping uh, onages to come in. So what I'm going to do as a result is I'm going to move a couple of units of, yeah, Velites over to Amulius the Wrathful, who doesn't need, like, a proper army. And incidentally, you can also just have yourself an extra Hoplite Mercenary, sure. So the proper army needs to be here, in which case, do I want two or three? Two should be fine, to be honest. And then we'll just move this over in this direction, and we'll move the other one up north towards here. And actually, you know what? Titus Brutus, you need to start moving your army north as well. You're not going to attack anything. You can just clear out these rebels and then start holding the bridge. Now, does he actually have enough to do that? Yes, I think he does. Five units of infantry up front. Fine. Send also two units of cavalry, all of these and all of these. Bylazora is going to be a little bit on the unhappy side, but actually it's pretty much fine with that state of affairs. And then this guy starts moving north. We'll just take out these rebels. We'll chase them off in a minute. And then, yeah, as soon as that is all done, we will actually be in good shape to hold that bridge while these two cities are taken down. If the Thracians counterattack, this will be where the battle is held. And this little army here will do better than you'd probably expect it to. And by the way, I'll totally just pick up some extras because I am swimming in money. Ah, and speaking of swimming in money, I've got someone to buy down here, don't I? You, my good little rebel friend, I would like you to join the faction, please. 31,000, yeah, sure, why not? Chicken feed. So you are going to be, of course, apparently loyal. You always pick that up. But you are a decent commander. And you have no morale penalties at all. So let's get you, actually, back over here towards Pergamon, where you can actually pick up the start of a decent army over here. Because right now we've got enough generals floating around. Now, sorry, what I was saying before, Oppius Brutus. So what we need to do with him is separate out him and his cavalry. Actually, just make sure, do you not have a... Oh, you've got a quartermaster. Right, that's a little bit unfortunate, because that means if I separate your men from you, they might not be able to follow. Yeah, that's a little bit on the awkward side. Let's just see if your entire army can make it to here. No, the entire army can't make it to there, so we'll need to see if we can figure this out here. Which is, if we just move all of his cavalry up to here, that's fine. And then, oh, the gates are open. Right, okay, this is good. And now what we do is we take the infantry that couldn't make it, and we merge it into this army, and now suddenly it can. You can often, like, cheat the game like that. So, we've now got open gates. Now, that's worth thinking about. Meanwhile, by the way, can we actually get this guy? Oh, hang on. Where's the Pontic King gone? He's, he's not in here, because um, if you ever want to know if like there's a family member there, if you write it with an assassin, it'll always tell you the truth about whether there's an assassination target. He didn't go to... He's not there. He didn't go to Tarsus. Hang on. Get get my spy over here. Where the bloody hell has the Pontic King just gone? Unless he just died. No, he didn't die because the factionaire is still the factionaire. Okay, we are missing one member of the Pontic royal family right now, and I don't know where he is. Well, first things first, Titus Brutus, make sure you are fine, by the way. Yeah, you have got energetic, which is always welcome. Bloody, plus one morale. Great vanquisher, but hopefully we can get you a little bit better than that yet. And yeah, you've got nothing that hits morale in the slightest. Good. And in addition, you do have a member of your retinue that actually helps you when it comes to recovering from wounds, which is good. And Priest of Mars plus two command when attacking, which is welcome. Because command, like I've been told, command does have a very small effect on morale. It's quite minor and hard to detect. Like when people have tried to test this, like they've noticed relatively minor differences. But it's nice to have the advantage. So this guy's just taken his army and decided to stand out looking over the sea. Well, all right then, fine. Send our lovely man in to just go and see if he's willing to fight. He probably will be able to. I think, like, if that is, in fact, yeah, 9 by 2 grid, as I've just learned for the first time in, like, over a decade of playing this game, then, yeah, he's willing to do it. Let's see what we can learn about this guy. So he's got with him... Ah, Scythe Chariots. Our first run in with Scythe Chariots, to be honest. The Pontic Forces is just not much of an army until they get their proper phalanxes set up. Yeah, this actually isn't that good at all. It looks big, but it's not great. Now, what else have we got? It's another minus decrease cost to bribe. That's ridiculous. I just don't understand it. I genuinely do not understand why every single Pontic person I've run into has had some form of decreased cost to bribe 
perk associated. I don't remember ever seeing this before. So, we've got an army of, well, primarily Hellenic mercenaries. We've got a ridiculous amount of indirect fire. All we've got to do is go up to him and then basically just pelt him like crazy with a huge amount of arrows. And he should be pinned against the sea. So if we're lucky, the battlefield will be laid out in such a way as we can really press him against the shore and he won't be able to escape. Although where the hell he was going, I have no clue. So, yes, indeed, we do have the advantage here, which is, you know, generally, as you'd probably expect, like, the sea is going to be at a low point, and as a general rule, the land above the sea will go up. So they've got to be somewhere in here. I feel a little bit hard done by here, which is, I've pinned these guys against the sea, and yet they seem to have a significantly large area they could start in than I do, which I think feels very, very unfair indeed, but all right. Nothing to take into account. They do actually have scythe chariots, which are dangerous. So I need to draw up my troops acknowledging that fact. Which is, if I draw up one of my hoplites, yeah, about here, and this is my front line, that's fine. So we'll put a nice, and we'll make it a nice wide front line, because we're relatively low in infantry. So a nice wide front line will be absolutely fine. Now what I also want to do is I want to have hoplites guarding my flanks. Now, the archers are not going to be exposed. I'm just going to keep them hidden because these guys, I don't think, had much in the way of indirect fire. And by the way, just look at those creased archers. These guys know how to stand, all nicely queued up. My archers just bum around untrained gits. Meanwhile, of course, yeah, my Rhodian slingers, I'm going to put right at the front to see if I can draw them forward directly into my flipping hoplites. Because if they want to charge forward directly into the hoplites, that's fine. I'll keep them with skirmish mode on. That's 100% fine as well. Now, we are lacking, however, in... Yeah, we're lacking a little bit on the cavalry front. So we'll just keep my general in the middle just to boost everyone's morale here. And I will keep some cavalry ready to move around wherever it needs to move. And we've got some war dogs to release when the moment is right as well. So we'll just go for all of that. That's fine. We should be able to win this. Now, where are they? There they are. So what are they going to do? Because they might decide to charge forward anyway. And incidentally, there's some scythe chariots over there. As I expected, the game kind of treats them like cavalry. So it's not too surprising that it's trying to kind of like flank with them instead. So it generally doesn't put them in the middle. It puts them on the flanks, which is why I wanted to have a nice unit of uh, these hoplites at the side. And incidentally, if you're going to try and flank that wide, I'm going to actually bring my line a little bit wider over here. Let's just see what's going to go on here. Yeah, they are moving forward. I'm just going to have these guys around here. So the scythe chariots that side. Are there scythe chariots the other as well? They've got a... Uh, yes, there's another unit of scythe chariots around the other side. So I'm also going to drop a little bit thinner on this flank as well. Three is fine for taking care of scythe chariots. If these guys even brush against the tips of these hoplites, then they will just melt immediately. This is the safest position because I don't want flipping chariots smashing into the side of me. Now, my flipping Rhodian slingers have already started to... No, those guys haven't. These guys have, however. Or at least they did for a minute. Now they've stopped. Fine. Apparently these guys are almost but not quite in range. The Cretans, however, are most certainly firing at this point. Uh, remind me, you had an actual... Yes, you did indeed have an actual unit with you. You've actually got the faction air, of course. They've got one phalanx. <laughs> oh, that doesn't look good for you. Now, what I probably need to do is just gently push these guys forward. The Cretan archers have got up to Silver Chevron, which is great. They've already... Oh, they've torn apart the hillman already. That's just beautiful. Right. Guys, change your target over to these Eastern Infantry, and with a slight uphill advantage, let's see how well you do against spearmen with shields who are actually facing you. And the answer is, they just start melting. Beautiful. Not as well, of course, as if they were actually kind of, you know, properly facing me. Now, with this, I'm going to break up the um, design I've already got, and I'm going to reform it now, so that the hoplites are in the position I actually want them to be in. And now I'm just going to slowly move this army forward so my archers get into a better position. Right. Everyone just take a few steps forward. Everyone nice and calm. Cretan archers just finishing their last volley before they come forward. Anyone responding to that? No, no one is responding to that. That's fine. I just kind of want to get my Rhodians into range as well. Yep, there we are. Now the Rhodians are going to be in range. I'll be, they're only going to be in range of... A couple of units of Hillmen here, but that's fine. These guys fire fast, and they will do some very good jobs here. And I'm kind of hoping they're going to bait some of these guys forward. 
They're attacking those guys right now. If they attack these guys, then they'll also do like, they'll hit the phalanx pikemen a little bit in the rear. So that's fine. Uh, you guys, don't want you to do that. I'd rather you attack these guys. Actually, go for these guys. These guys haven't taken a knock yet. So go for those guys instead. Because right now we're just basically weakening this guy's line. Ah! Now this is good. Now they have to redraw up because one of their units just died entirely. So as a result of that, like, we're now going to get one easy shot in the rear of them or on the side, which is going to do way more damage. Oh, here we go. We've got ourselves the guys over here. These guys have decided they want it. No, guys, guys, I don't recommend what you're doing right now. I don't recommend it one little bit. But fortunately, those guys have not now close enough to be utterly torn apart by my basic archers. But yeah, the chariots have just decided they want to go on a little bit of a tour on the front line. Which is, oh, they've gone mad. They've gone mad. They've broken and they've gone crazy. Yeah, this is what happens to chariots. They can go berserk and then they just basically start running wherever the hell they want. But then they run into the front of flipping uh, hoplites and die. So at this point, my archers have just, oh, that's beautiful. I love, by the way, how wheels keep rolling. The wheels detach from the chariots and then just start rolling around everywhere. It's marvelous. So that's one unit of chariots taken care of immediately. Beautiful. And their front line is starting to look very, very damaged indeed. Yeah, this is just a case of picking them apart. This is good. And a couple of units have decided they want to move forward. This isn't going to work out well for them, unfortunately. Pontic Cavalry is coming in. Heavy Cavalry. The Archers are just going to start knackering these guys. My guys are on skirmish. They will flee. The All of these guys will are also fire at will. So as a result, the Peeler are going to come in. Nice. We're going to take some damage to our Rhodian Slingers, but that's okay. These guys, those guys broke before they even got close to me. Beautiful. So that little abortive charge did not go very well in the slightest. The Pontic Cavalry are fighting to the... No, no, they're not there. It says they're fleeing. I feel like they're not. Oh, this is good news. Another unit of the Flipping Chariots just went berserk. This is marvellously good news, and as a result, charges forward like crazy, and my basic guys can just tear him apart very, very easily indeed. And there we are, the wheels just roll down, and those guys are dead. Oh, another unit decided to come forward into the attack range of my archers. These guys are, they're feeling eager, they're feeling secure, they're feeling good about life, they're steady. They believe in what they're doing, these guys know what's going on, and now they're wavering, and now they're broken. It has been a roller coaster ride for these lads. Right, guys, a little bit further forward, please. We can get the archers into range now. Everyone just run forward. But hopefully, I'd like to be able to take a few shots at the Pontic Heavy Cavalry as well. Yep, those guys are marching, which is marvelously good. Oh, not sure if they want to or not. No, not quite yet. In comes the Pontic Light Cavalry. That's good for me as far as I'm concerned, because those guys can be torn apart very, very quickly indeed. They'll get a few light shots in against... Actually, you know what? You are almost out of everything, aren't you? Yeah, let's just quickly get in some shots. They just want to kind of toss in some javelins, but... Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh, the murder. The beautiful, beautiful murder. Another attack comes in. They sound the battle horn and then immediately start running away again. Oh, the general might decide he wants to do a thing right now. The general, you know what, let's get the Rodian Slingers out of there. They're actually out of uh, stones at this point. So, yeah, there we are. And, oh, the Pontic Heavy Cavalry thought about it for a second, then changed his mind. Finally got some flipping arrows in range of the Pontic Heavy Cavalry. Lovely. So we can start pinning those guys a little bit with these archers. Admittedly, we're almost out of flipping arrows at this point. We've left the... Oh! The general just got murdered. I didn't even know we were shooting him, so that's good. We are at this point, I think, actually out of arrows entirely. Which means, unfortunately, we do actually need to go and finish this off manually. Well, that's fine. Guys, go and... When I say finish this off manually, um... That bit of blue there, that's not actually a battle line. That's just a pile of corpses. So that's nice. Though sadly they're going to get away, but I'm pretty sure over 85% of the army is dead. So as a result, those guys will break and never be heard from again. And yep, there we are. That was actually a pretty simple matter. The Pontic armies, they just, they need the phalanxes. Without the phalanxes, they just, well, this happens to them. It's just a pile of corpses. 2,411 kills versus 63. I'll take that. Yes, indeed. The army has given up. This guy's become a superior commander. And he has also picked up an eastern a turncoat. Plus one commandment fighting against eastern empires. Lovely. Though, admittedly, there's only so many of them we're going to be fighting at this point. Like, uh, the Parthians we probably won't bother with. 
The Armenians are, for the most part, they don't have anything you really want to take. So really, you just fight a defensive actions against them. So Eastern Turncoats are probably the most useless of all Turncoats, but never mind. Ah, we found the faction leader. He's reappeared in that city. Where did he go? Where did you just flipping go? Incidentally, by the way, um, at this point, I think he's all there is. So if I was able to kill the faction leader at this point, um, that would be Pontus done. So in some ways, the better option might actually be just to go and take the faction leader's city. Because if I were to do that, yeah, all the other cities would just go rebel. But then equally, if this city's rebel, the Egyptians will get it. So actually, this actually works for me, because now I can get Tarsus without declaring war on the Egyptians. So that actually kind of works. Now, speaking of which, we have got one thing to do today that worries me just a little bit, which is we've got to take out the capital of Pontus for all its beautiful, beautiful infrastructure. It's a huge city and we're going to definitely enslave it. It'll still be very, very powerful after we've enslaved it. But the problem with it is, yeah, there's onagers there and the gates are open, but they're still going to be guarded. So we're going to take quite a few casualties doing this unless we get really lucky. Because onagers, yeah, catapults inside a town can wreak a lot of devastation. Let's also just make sure the right cities are growing, which is... Ah! Nicomedia will get a huge influx of troops. That will be good. Incidentally, you sadly can't get to... Actually, you know what? This works. You go to... Actually, has Ansira already got a... Yeah, you step inside Ansira. Nicomedia's already got someone in it. You go back around to Sardis for a second. Yes, 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 I know. We'll lower the tax rate. It's fine. Now, we have got generals inside all of these crap little villages. If we enslave this city up here, then as a result, all of these can start growing. Oh, yes. That's just the thing we needed. That's spot on. So, guess you could do with some people. Actually, yeah, you, Periandros... You nip over here to Segestica, because then they can pick up a handful of people as well. Beautiful. Instead, lower the tax rate in Patavium just while you're over there, because you won't be able to get back this turn. Lovely. Oh, yeah. Potentially, the Thracians are more powerful than I anticipated, and we have the small problem that if I don't declare war on them soon, then when they come for me, they're going to be coming for Segestica and Patavium, which could potentially be a little bit on the difficult. Let's just get some troops trained up here. This is... Starting to get a little bit on the worrying side, actually. Anyway, let's get in here. Let's take this place out. The spies have opened the gates, which is beautiful. I could just auto-resolve this. It might be easier. But to be honest, I'd quite like to see the onagers in action. That's quite fun. Ah, and we're going to let Oppius Brutus speak, by the way, because he is an outstanding speaker, which normally means he begins with a bit of a big rhetorical flourish of some description. Brave warriors! I have won great renown through leading men to victory. I see no reason to change the habits of a lifetime today. So yes, indeed, you very often do see when you kind of have the outstanding speakers, you've got that sort of thing that happens. You've got the kind of the uh, the big rhetorical flourishes. You also do sometimes get the friends, Romans, countrymen uh, kind of speech there as well. So yeah, we've got everything we could want here. Catapult rangers, proper big old elite cavalry stables. We haven't even had any of them in our empire. This will be the first elite cavalry stable in the empire. There's the nice councillor's chambers, the level four government building for the eastern factions, but still fountain there. Very, very good indeed. And there's the army barracks. Very good as well. Temple of Aphrodite will be tearing down, of course, but never mind. What can you do, eh? So, they are going to have onagers somewhere. We need to basically funnel through this. And, oh, this is going to be difficult potentially well you know what we've got ourselves a really healthy amount of infantry that we can just basically uh pour in through the front gate and anything that stands in our way we will just absolutely murder with our cretans our cretans can just be back here murdering anything that dares be stupid enough to try and hold this front gate yeah there we are right there so we've got archers our guys are now going to immediately try and take out this gate right here so this covering fire is going to... Oh! <laughs> I think they've just realised their mistake. Oh, there's Onagers right there. Right. So, this is the problem. They've got Onagers right here, and we need to take care of those Onagers, like, now. So, the Hastati are going to go in first. And we're just, we're just sending them in, alright? They're going to go in first, because those Onagers are going to start firing, like, right flipping now. And now we need to send the Prinkipers. Oh, they're firing the flaming things, which means they're... Oh no! You utter git! That is so annoying! 
They just took out 10 of my flipping Cretan archers like that. Right, we need to stop these guys like right now. Who are you firing at? You're firing at... They're also firing at my bloody Cretans. The flaming ones like have big splash damage and do a lot of damage, but they're very inaccurate, so they often miss. No, guys, I need you to get in the city to stop these bloody onagers. The thing is, I'm taking... Ah, oh, well, you know what? We're just going to basically have lost her. Get in the cocking city! Get through the door! Yes! That's what I want you to do. Get through here. Over here. Lovely. Now, because as soon as their crews come under attack, they won't be able to fire anymore. So you guys, get over here. Lovely. So these guys can't fire anymore. Right, this crew over here, I need you to just push through. Right, so they've broken immediately. Now I need you to get over here. We basically, I mean, hopefully we'll get some of these guys back. Uh, in the same way as, like, you know, when you get hit by archers, not much happens. That's a miss and a miss. You see, like, when it hits, it does a load of damage, but it does miss quite a lot. And now these guys can't fire anymore. And then hopefully this final one won't fire either. Right? Guys, 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 this... No, you're supposed to be you're supposed to be fighting the onagers. Once you can get the infantry up to the onagers, it's fine. But like, I mean, just a couple of onagers sitting inside the city. They've got two good hits. And just look, look at the crispy dead Cretans. I love Cretans, and they've crispified some of them. What a bunch of bastards. Right, well, we know we've got elite cavalry stables in here as well. We may as well send cavalry in to reinforce, because my men seem to be slightly struggling with the task at hand. Ah, uh, well, you know what? It's fine. Just take out these guys. They're already wavering. And what's actually coming up here? We've got another onager crew is trying to come and reclaim their onagers. Uh, that's not going to work out well for them. Right, guys, at this point, maybe just draw yourselves up inside the city, please. Oh, no, hang on. I tell you what, if these guys want to get involved, why don't you charge them? They are going to struggle slightly. They're already to... Actually, that's are eager. Which is kind of surprising. Just keep tossing in horses. We'll murder them eventually. We can retrain everything when we're done. There we are. They've broken. My horses can now just chase them down. That is the threat of the onagers removed. Uh, I think the Pontic forces have figured out what's going on here. Because they are pulling back from the walls already. Uh, actually, where's the... Where's the phalanx gone? Alright, keep an eye on the... Okay, there's the phalanx. That works for me. So the phalanx is kind of coming around here. Okay. Let's bring the Cretans up. They can just pick him apart while he comes. Uh, if the Cretans are about in this position, guys, charge forward, please. Thank guys. Gu guys. I don't know. Okay, I'm not sure who's giving you orders, but stop doing the thing that you're doing. Yeah, these guys over here are seeing some horses and thinking they can get some easy horse kills in. Unfortunately, what they have not counted on is the fact I've got some very, very good archers waiting right outside of the city to murder them as soon as they come round this here corner. So that will work for me. Yeah, that's got to be... That's got to be fine in a second. Yep, there we are. Those guys are already going to start firing in a minute. These guys are not in phalanx. Oh, they got their spears down just in the nick of time. But they're going to... Ah, they're moving not quite the right way. So we're still getting them in the side. Or possibly the game's calculating this is in the front. Because it feels like we're still doing not that much damage. Oh, they've taken a step away. Shoot them in the back quickly. And that does better damage right now. At this point, we can just pick apart their one phalanx. and Marvellous. They're already shaken, they're already wavering, and as soon as they break, we can just send a horse in to wipe them out. Yeah, there we are. Right, I'm going to send one horse in to finish them off, and I'm going to move my units to make sure they don't fire anymore. One final round is going in now, and then my horses finish off the survivors. Nice. And there goes down the phalanxes. As someone corrected me in the comments, yes, technically... We are correct that there are differences between the different types of hoplites in this game. The pikemen and the hoplites are different because the pikemen do actually indeed have longer spears, as was indeed entirely historically accurate. Pikemen that are descended from the Alexander and Macedonian tradition have significantly longer pikes, which are longer than the spears that hoplites use. Meaning in a direct slugging match between uh, pikemen and hoplites, pikemen do much, much, much better because they can be poking the hoplites with their pointy sticks when the hoplites haven't actually started pointing the pikemen with their pointy sticks. So, from most points of view in this game, it doesn't make much difference. But if you're playing as a faction with Pipe and you're taking Hoplites or vice versa, it does become relevant to that point. But yes, indeed, thank you to the pedant in the comments who pointed out the difference between Pipe and Hoplites. 
and how it's historically accurate, that is indeed true. So at this point, they have withdrawn to the central plaza. We have got ourselves some hillmen to take out. We've got ourselves the heavy cavalry. We've got the peltas, and we've got a tiny group of onages over here. Nothing too much to worry about here. Probably at this point, we just send our infantry in to finish the job. I've decided to bring some archers up just to lure the heavy cavalry off the plaza, although they might be coming by choice, to be honest. Right, my principes would do a very, very decent job here. The hillmen are just going to get murdered because these are, well, you know, they're hillmen. They're just shepherds with crappy spears and swords, and they're taking on actual proper professionalized infantry right now. So those guys are just melting while my units are just doing very, very nicely indeed. They are already wavering. Their morale is not good. Yeah, there's heavy cavalry coming up here. These guys are just set to fire at will and hold position in guard mode. And then, yeah, these guys are trying to toss in some stuff over there, but we'll be able to toss some peeler right back at them too. Very good. Yeah, now we can just be an exchange of peeler. Or uh, rather, peeler to their javelins. Technically, these guys do not have peeler. So we've already done a little bit of damage to them. These guys, in all fairness, if we lose one unit of, like, Principes to damage these guys, that's fine. These guys have now uh, come up to us, which means they have to fight melee, and I feel like in a protracted... Ah, yes, they've got the general in here as well, and he's right at the front. This all works for me. So my guys are shaken, so just to make sure they don't get too much more shaken, I am going to send in some reinforcements to help them out. These guys can just basically come around here because, yeah, once they've got some more friends with them, unless they feel like their flanks are a bit more secure and they're taking casualties more slowly because the casualties are... And by the way, the Cretan archers I called up... The Cretan... The Cretan... The Cretan archers I called up. You guys just stay back here, all right? Thank you. These guys are shaken, but they're not wavering. In come the reinforcements. Cloud of dust. Swords out. Pushing through. Relieving their friends. Marvellous. Ah, there's a couple of archers at the flipping back. That's annoying. Right, guys, you just hurry up if you'd be so kind, because once you've drawn up there, I need you to archer the archers. I think these guys want some revenge for the sniping that was done earlier to them outside the gate. Uh, but they should break momentarily. I mean, we should kill them almost immediately. They're already wavering. They're down to almost nothing. It's fine. These guys are doing, you know, and they've finally broken. Good. So these guys can just basically, you guys just hold out here for a second. One unit of Prinkipes has been badly damaged, but it's fine. And then if you can just snipe these guys while they try and flee, that'd be marvellous. Okay, Pontic Heavy Cavalry have been taken out just by that one unit of Cretans. There's now nothing left but their leader, together with, yeah, remnants of Hillman, Peltas. At this point, it's just down to infantry. Infantry, just go in there and just beat them. Though, incidentally, we could probably do without the extremely damaged unit coming along too. So you guys forward, you okay, right? You are warmed up or fresh, marvellous. The old Onager team has decided to be the first to end the battle. Marvellous. Well done, lads. They've got the... Ah, the Peltas are coming in. Fine, we'll send you in. And then we'll go after you guys as well. And then finally, we've got the king to take out. At this point, we should just be able to basically murder them one-on-one. -on -one. Go on, lads. For Rome! Yes, indeed, for Rome. Marvellous. Now just slaughter these guys. Slaughter these guys. Marvellous. You guys... Actually, you know what? You guys... Go and take care of the Peltas as well. We don't really need to worry about the king. He's literally one bloke. So you guys just push in here, murder them. This will just have to be to the last man because they won't break. But I have the vastly superior troops here. Come on, Hastati. Just go up to these guys. I mean, they're wearing little flowery dresses. Look at them. They're wearing flowery dresses. Just stab them. And, ooh, what has started just snuck up behind their king and murdered him. Right, bring in some cavalry to slam into the rear of them. Why not? Let's get this done a bit quicker. And the cavalry's just not going to have time to get involved. My troops are just grinding their way forward, as Roman infantry are very good at doing. You just put them in front of something, tell them to keep marching forward, and they'll do it. And here comes the last one. He's just going to get, yep, dead. Well done, lads. Good work. Solid, honest Roman infantry doing very, very well indeed. They got 300 kills in, but this infrastructure, this means we can take care of that very easily. We can repair all of our guys. In we go. Marvellous. And of course, yes, because this population is massive, the population is decreasing and there's a potential for revolt. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to enslave them and they're still not happy. They're still really not happy, in fact. Ooh, right. That's a little bit on the concerning side. Uh, well, 
We'll need to figure out... Possibly I should have exterminated those guys. Okay, fortunately, we have one advantage here, which is the game's got a little bit on the confused side, which is it's giving me the option for yearly games, which you might look at and be a bit confused, because how can I host a yearly game? I don't actually have an arena yet. I don't even have the ability to build an arena, because there's no market and it's gated behind that. Well, what the game is doing is the game is figuring out, one, what faction I'm, which is Roman, and two, what kind of different buildings are present. So, for example, there's like, you know army barracks so that's the equivalent of level four infantry infrastructure now if i were roman elite cavalry stables would actually be a proper if i just go over to the little building browser here hang on the elite cavalry stables would be the hippodrome where we could actually hold chariot races allows races to be held so the game is assuming i can do that unless of course it's a bit cleverer than i think and actually you can hold Oh no! You can hold racers at the Elite Cavalry Stables, even the Eastern style. Okay, I did not know that. Fair enough. Though incidentally, we are indeed going to have to find some way of taking care of the order here. Now for the moment, I'm going to put these guys up to daily games. So just for once, we might actually have a city that's genuinely going to lose money because of massive corruption and massive entertainment. So possibly I could have burnt this city to the ground, but you know what? It'll be fine. It'll be absolutely fine. And also, by the way, I'm about to get rid of your Temple of Aphrodite. I know you're not going to like that. By the way, how's your... The growth rate's pretty high here. Growth rate's pretty high. Uh, what do you guys have to trade as resources? They've got timber and silver. So I would like this place to be a trading outpost. To be honest, I would. And by the way, we can retrain all of our troops here, including the Equitairs, to get their experience up a bit, which is cool. Obviously, we want to build roads straight away, because that's pretty flipping important. Uh, but yeah, what we need to do is we need to have daily games for a while to just keep them happy. And while that's happening, by the way, that little symbol shows up to remind you you're doing regular games just so you don't forget and hemorrhage a large amount of money. But that's fine. We've got plenty of money to throw at this problem for now. And incidentally, we can also repair the walls. We'll do that first, then we'll build ourselves a nice thing here. So that there is that capital taken over. And actually, there's another nice thing here, which is we've just unlocked at this brand new city we've just taken over that is culturally as un-Roman as it can be, a Roman troop we've not seen before, the Triarii. <laughs> Say hello to the Triarii. These are the Roman spearmen. You get them ridiculously late in the game. So Rome does indeed have spearmen in its early game armies. It's just, yeah, you don't get them for quite a while. And they're kind of... They're kind of interesting, which is like, if you look at their stats, they're barely any better than actual Principes. And unlike the Principes, they don't get the Peeler to throw. So in many ways, Triarii, you, know, you don't want to like, make an entire line out of Triarii, because they're actually kind of, in some ways, worse than Principes, because the Peeler just gives the Principes such an advantage. They're ever so slightly defensively better. You can see that actually their weapon type is actually light rather than heavy, because they use a spear. Their advantage is they get the bonus fighting cavalry. So you want a few of these guys to take on cavalry, but other than that, honestly, they're not actually that good. This also gave us two other things we wanted to see, which is, yes, indeed, the population of Nicomedia has just sprung up, as indeed it has, and Syrah. So very, very soon indeed, we're going to have two good, honest Roman towns right here, and that can be straight up to pave roads to match up with Sardis. So, some of the culture pencils here. Actually, you know what we could do? I'm just out of thought. The Empire is starting to get a little bit on the stretched side, and in particular... The problem over here is partially that of distance to capital, which is 55%. Now, I could solve that right now by moving the capital to... I feel like it shouldn't be Thessalonica, to be honest. But, as a temporary measure, Thessalonica just became the capital. Now, that causes problems elsewhere, which is Croton just became angry because now they're actually suffering from distance to capital, probably for, like, one of the first times in their history. Then we've also got problems in Apollonia. We now need to lower the tax rates around here because everyone is now a bit unhappy because they're very far from the capital. We can also restore everyone back into their cities. On the other hand, however, bear in mind, of course, this means that some other cities we can probably put the tax rate up for because Corinth and Larissa probably are now much closer than they once were to, uh, yes, indeed, the capital. So as a result, Sparta, Corinth, these guys are probably all happy at being taxed a little bit more. That's better. So we don't need daily games, we can just have... And also, it has actually updated to say, races, not games. When I came out of that city and then went back in, it figured out what it actually was. So that's nice. Rome Total War. Such attention to detail, it's absolutely marvellous. Also, while I'm actually here, 
may as well just slap up a watchtower. Why not? There we are. Now we've got a slightly better visibility of the sea. So, Pontus is starting to fall apart, ladies and gentlemen, but there is more to do with them yet, including taking out their king and their brand new capital, and then finally Tarsus. But this has caused other complications for us as well. We are now neighbouring the Armenians. I don't know how trustworthy those guys are. We'll need to see what we do about that, ladies and gentlemen. I may well decide to send one of my new generals who's relatively inexperienced or useless. So maybe one of the bribed ones from Pontus. Admittedly, I bet those guys are really glad they joined me now, because the alternative... The alternative looks so much worse all of a sudden, because the alternative mainly involves being killed. I might send one of those guys out to the mountain ranges to build a whole bunch of watchtowers out here, just to keep an eye on the bloody Armenians. I mean, I feel like they've probably got their hands full with war against Egypt, but we'll have to see, ladies and gentlemen. And all that's coming next time. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been Rome Total War. Thank you very much, and goodbye. What the hell? All right. We've now got a Scottish zombie travelling with us. Oh, he's actually quite good now. And he's got over his drinking problem. Which is... Oh, he eats human flesh. He's got some decent carrying capacity. Okay, fine, he eats people. But come on, let's not be flipping judgmental about this.